Okay. Hello, everyone that is tuning in to this panel. My name is Deandra Simon, and I have the honor and the privilege to be able to moderate this discussion. Um, as all the panelists are waiting to turn on their cameras, we just want to welcome you into our discussion today. So for those who are joining us, this is the Torch of Wisdom Young Professionals panel. We just wanted to come on and have this discussion just to be able to talk about important issues, especially being um, young Black and in corporate America. So I'll let the other panelists briefly introduce themselves and we will get started with this discussion. Sydney, would you like to start? Yeah, for sure. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry about the di technical difficulties there. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Sydney Benson. I'm a recent graduate of the illustrious Howard University, and I currently intern at Nike as a women's marketplace intern. I'll okay. go next. Oh, yeah. um, my name is Aaron Johnson. Uh, I'm a recent graduate of Morehouse College. Uh, I majored in marketing and minored in journalism uh and my last internship was with apple music in the video production department um in la last summer michael you're up next oh sorry sorry i didn't know am i introducing <laughs> myself right no problem yes yes my name is michael okalagwe I'm rising senior at Georgia State University, interning at Amazon and AWS. And yeah, that's it. And I'm studying computer information systems and marketing. Amazing. Michaela? Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Michaela Smith, and I am a rising senior from Clark Atlanta University. And I'm currently studying business administration with a concentration in management. And I'm currently interning at Morgan Stanley in their wealth management division. Hello, I'm Zuri Godfrey. I'm a rising senior business management major and student athlete at Howard University originally from Hampton, where I am now, but I chose the real HU, so let that be known. And I'm interning right now at Google, I guess, as you can see on the shirt. So thank you so much to all the uh, wonderful panelists that we have today. Um, I really love the diversity even within the schools and definitely showing HBCU pride. I myself, I come from a city university, so I'm really proud to be amongst you all um, at your great institutions. And just getting started and kind of giving more context, we really wanted to make sure that we had diversity not only within the schools that we attended, but also the professionals, the professions that we're looking to get into. Um, so I thought it was really intentional um, and great that we're able to see this amongst our crowd right now. And I would like to start it off with kind of a group question, kind of easing into um, the panel. So one thing I would just like to pose, and whoever would like to answer this, they can go first. Um, just speaking more about your professional journey, uh, what programs or people have truly helped you get to the point that you're at now. I think it's really important setting that stage and really showing those who have helped pave the way before you and definitely giving insight for those who are joining us for our call today. Um, well, I guess I'll go first. Um, so again, Sydney here. I feel like my freshman year coming into Howard, I didn't know who I was. I felt like I saw everybody succeeding, you know, freshmen already had these internships with JP Morgan, Wells Fargo. And I'm like, what's going on here? Like, who am I? What am I doing? Um, and so coming in, into my sophomore year, that's when I applied to MLT. And so hopefully um, I have my MLT family on this call as well. Um, but it was just a program for those that don't know that um, connects minorities to Fortune 500 companies. It really just gives us the opportunity to redefine who we are and um, figure out what we really want to do. So I'm very thankful um, for that MLT network. I could go next. Honestly, for me, I don't think it was one specific program or a group of people. Honestly, it was the platform LinkedIn. I was heavy on LinkedIn my freshman year and sophomore year. I, well, I still am now, but that's where my freshman year and sophomore year when I didn't have as much experience as I do now, 
really started making those connections, reaching out for coffee chats, hosting the, the minor experiences that I had had. So yeah, that, that's LinkedIn has been where I've been able to build my brand personally and professionally. I'm going to, oh, you got it, Michaela. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so coming from a PWI where like the diversity was really like international students, um, you know, I, when I transferred to Clark Atlanta, I was really just um, overwhelmed just being among students that looked like me once again. Um, and then last year, I won a scholarship from the Executive Leadership Council. And I think that definitely was a program that uh, really helped me to get to where I am today. I had a really good experience connecting with a lot of uh, Black professionals and um, some great students from HBCUs um, just around uh, the nation that were just, you know, had so much experience and had so much to offer and so much to bring to the table. And I really think it prepared me for the opportunities that I have right now. So um, if anybody's interested in learning more about that, um, I'll leave my email and maybe they can email me if they want to learn more. But I think that was the program that really helped me most. Nice. And I'm going to go. Oh. Thank you, thank you. Well, I'll go ahead and say that um, I went to PWI my freshman year of college and thing, and I played college sports and um, I would say the atmosphere was different. Um, it didn't really seem, something was missing. We didn't really talk about our professional career. So I decided to transfer my sophomore year to Georgia State. And that's where I learned how to be more professional just because I was in the city of downtown and it just changed everything. I was being, I was around more black professionals and it was able to really spark my career. And I would say just being in downtown Atlanta alone was like the number one reason which changed me so much. So yeah. Aaron, I didn't know if you wanted to take a stab at that question as well before. I oh yeah, yeah, I can. Um, it was really the same as everybody else. Like, um, not one specific program, but just the network of people, um, career counselors, MLT, and just older kids who are getting these internships kind of pouring back into me and stuff like that. So just kind of listening. Okay, that is amazing to hear how um, you all have commonalities in a lot of the professional programs that you guys are um, all doing. So congratulations on all of your achievements. Um, it definitely is inspiring. One thing I would like to touch on, a commonality that a couple of our panelists have, is that many of you guys, uh, aside from balancing your internships and academics, you were also into athletics as well. Um, so I know Zuri and Sydney were both student athletes, and I think that's a really um, important important thing to highlight, uh, especially because though, you know, being a student athlete is a lot of hard work. So can you guys kind of speak more to um, Sydney and Zuri? This question is uh, geared towards you about your experience being a student athlete, how that's been able to help, you know, your teamwork, collaboration skills, and even in the current roles that you are now, especially you, Sydney, with your Nike position. Um, I guess I'll go first. So I think some of the key things that I've taken away from just being a student athlete is number one, knowing how to work with others, especially your teammates, being determined, having that dedication, because um, I feel like a lot of people see my success and they're like, how did you get here? Like you've been doing everything right. And at one point I wasn't doing everything right. Like I didn't know who I was. And so having my teammates around me and even those that came before me, seeing them succeed, um, it was like, okay, you got to figure it out. And this is what you need to do moving forward. Um, coming to Nike, it, it was definitely difficult because I already had something going on with LinkedIn and I had two different start dates and I really had to navigate that aspect. Um, but even in the role that I'm sitting in now, like just being able to advocate for myself and speak up, I think that's really what's made the difference. Yeah, I think for me, well, first, Sydney, you hit on a lot of a lot of points. So I'm just echo those and try to add in where I can. But I think for me personally, it has given me transferable skills. And Sydney, as I said, she already hit on this a little bit. So I'll try to talk about some different skills that it has given me. So I think the first one, which is probably the most important, is time management, prioritization. So having workouts, class, 
study hall, freshman year, just having all of those conflicting commitments has allowed me to make sure that my calendar is up to date every minute of the day. That's literally my best friend, no cap. But yeah, so that that's that's one. And then two, it has taught me how to, and this is a, not a, a fancy term at all, but how to work hard. Going to every in, internship, experience, summit, program, whatever, being there, showing up, working hard, doing whatever you're doing 110%. So yeah, I think those are the, the two transferable skills that it has helped me. Thank you so much for that, Sydney and Zuri. It's really great to be able to hear the transferable skills that you were um, you know, using from being an athlete and being able to use that now in your corporate settings. Um, it actually leads me to my next point, and I'm actually going to direct this question towards Michael. Um, so Michael right now is interning with Amazon, which is one of the biggest e-commerce sites right now out. You know, Working for Jeff Bezos is interesting, especially as a young Black professional. So my question to you is, how do you remain true to your core values in um, the workplace? I mean, there's a lot of things that we've been hearing recently in the news and just as much as you can speak on um, in your current position, how do you remain true to yourself and um, how do you feel like your, your team supports you in that area? Thank you. Okay, okay. So first I would answer with that question is, I don't know if a lot of people are really, um, they know Amazon's 12 leadership principles they treat those like the bread and butter of their company. So like, I'm not gonna say you come in with, I'm not gonna say it's all about their core values, but when you come into Amazon, they tell you right now, here is our book we listen to, and you hear them say it all the time, the 12 leadership principles. So coming in as an intern, I would say how I maintained myself and stay true to myself is making sure I tell my manager or tell the people I'm working with, hey, this is what I also believe in too. Showing them my core values and making sure I emphasize that I'm like, I'm interviewing the company as I intern there to see if this is a true fit for me, if that makes sense. Um, just because I do say that my core values are just as important as anything. And I can't, with working with the largest e-commerce store in America right now in the world is, it's something, it has its toss and turns, but at the same time, I'm learning how to really like, evaluate if like their core values align with who I am as well and when I see an overlap it makes it not it like makes it a lot easier to work if that makes sense or a lot easier to adopt the company and their core values when they align with mine no um I think everything you said it was amazing Michael and uh, I think the the thing that really stood out from what you said was about your own core values aligning with the company that you're at and I also want to say that on your part it is very bold that you're able to have these conversations and to feel like you have the agency to be able to speak up to your supervisors and those who are leading on your team and to be able to say look you know I'm, I'm a young black man I'm here in this space. I'm trying to learn and advance professionally. I'm looking to, to get as much as I can learn and contribute to your team so I can go to the next goal. So that's amazing. And mm -hmm. on the topic of even thinking about next steps, Michaela, I actually want to turn this question to you. Um, so I know that you and Zuri are working um, for an amazing company, Building Brand You. Um, and I'll let you talk more about that because I'm pretty sure you can speak to it more than I can. Um, so on the topic of even... Um, building your personal brand and what that looks like. Can you talk about your involvement with that company and uh, what exactly you do um, to help other students perfect their personal brand? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I actually just joined Build a Brand New just a few weeks ago. And I was really excited about the initiative um, specifically because I'm really into professional development and I'm all about being ready for the next opportunity. And I was really excited when Zuri brought this to me. And overall, we just really wanted to help students get prepared for the next step. You know, I think the world is changing as we know it. And I think this is a great opportunity for all of us to um, really work on those things that we kind of put on the back burner. And I think part of that is professional development. Um, seeing that we now have extra time in our hands. Um, so essentially, I am the chief operating officer, operation officer. So I do um, oversee the operations of Build and Brand You, like some of our client processes and uh, basically how we run and function as a company. And I assist Zuri and, um, you know, just some of our planning and organization and things like that. Um, I also am the resume advisor. 
So I do uh, get a chance to edit, review, and create resumes and cover letters and things like that. And we also do give a lot of tips and recommendations on how clients can be prepared and um, just to remain focused um, for their opportunities. So um, I think it's really important to always be constantly up, upgrading your brand. I think you're always changing. Um, the things you're passionate about always changes. And um, your brand is something that just needs to always be updated in a sense every single day. Thank you, Michaela, for that. Um, that's the amazing, awesome work that you guys are doing. So definitely be sure to follow them on Instagram um, if you are looking to build uh, you know, your, your personal brand and things of that nature. So it kind of leads me into the next question that I want to ask to the group. Um, it's really interesting that Michaela touched on um, how your personal brand always has to be ever changing. And us as, um, you know, entry level professionals looking kind of for that next full time role and what our next steps are looking like in our career. Can we keep it real for a second? Like, um, have you guys ever felt the need to code switch at the positions that you guys have been at? Like, I know we've all had stories and just for legal purposes, maybe we just won't name the companies. But if you could talk about an experience of where you had to kind of code switch or um, a situation where you felt like you wasn't necessarily um, able to really be your authentic self in the workplace, please share. Um, Cause you know, we all have experienced that and um, we'd just love to see how you handled the situation. I could start. It's not a specific company. I think it's it's an industry, the industry that I kind of recently came out of. And it's not a, a bad industry. One thing to know is be yourself. Who you are as a person can relate to the industry that you're in. And the industry that I was in that I interned in and had different experiences in was consulting. So consulting is basically problem solving. The includes a lot of traveling a lot of strategic work, which I enjoy the strategy side and the process side. But what I didn't enjoy is having to travel four days out of the week. I want to travel, but I want to travel when I want to travel. So yeah, that's one thing. And then another thing is, and they have been uh, specifically big three and big four consultants firm have been a lot better over the years of dress code and attire. But I know that I don't want to be in business casual. I don't want to be in a suit when I have to present or, or something along those lines, because as an athlete, I want to be in my sweats. No, I still want to be presentable, but I'm not gonna, I don't want to button up with a suit and tie every day. So I think transitioning from, from that industry into tech was a major change for me, which I enjoyed and allowed to bring my full self to work. I don't have to dress up. Per se, I just throw on a Google t-shirt, got some sweats on and some Gucci slides and, and, and we good. Maybe not the slides when we get back to the office, but you get the point what I'm saying. So yeah, that's my spill on that. So um, I'll answer this question next, just because my experience is the complete opposite from Zuri's. So working in like financial services industry, it is completely button up. If I was Zuri, suit and tie, like, you know, it's, it's not casual at all, but you know, because I'm virtual, I kind of have a little bit of a break from that. Um, but I definitely do code switch. <laughs> and sometimes I'm not even gonna lie, I catch myself almost saying some slang, but I'm able to catch it really quickly. Um, I've been code switching since high school. I attended a predominantly white high school. So it almost comes naturally to me um, that I can speak one way with friends and get a phone call and code switch right there. Um, I think you should authentically be yourself. Um, you just have to know which parts you can and can't bring to work. I don't think I'm 100% a different person when I'm in my internship because I don't feel like I'm bringing my best foot forward if I can't be unapologetic, unapologetically me. So I think you just kind of have to pick and choose what parts of you are most appropriate for the internship and what parts aren't. Um, but you always should advocate for yourself. Don't um, eliminate your voice. Don't feel like you shouldn't speak out if something isn't right. Um, like I said, you just have to, you have to be able to understand which parts are appropriate and which aren't. I just want to give the opportunity if anyone else wanted to touch into that question before. Yeah, we I was just about to hop in on that. So, um, yes, I code switch all the time. Um, just because 
I went to, I would say I went to a PWI, honestly, all throughout, like from elementary all the way till, to what, junior year of college, junior, senior, junior year, senior year of high school. So I learned how to basically switch back and forth. And when I got to the workforce, it was interesting. I first started as in tech. And I noticed you can honestly bring your true self, like Zuri was saying to Google, you can always bring your true self. Then that's when I flipped to the financial side and I worked as a financial analyst. It was not like that at all. You have to bring, you have to switch. It just, it just was something I learned the hard way. Um, there were times where I was saying slang, but I caught myself quickly, or there was times where my voice would change. I wouldn't have my natural flow of the voice. I would have to suppress my voice, if that makes sense, when I was speaking. Then I went to consulting at BCG. It was much more different. They were, they were, it was, it was, it was something. Consulting route was different. But when I got back to tech at Amazon, there, there's no switching. You get to be who you are. You get to talk how you want to. You get to wear what you want. And yeah, so that's, that's what I was saying. Thank I you. Oh, you want to touch in, Sydney? Yeah, just okay, in addition to that. Um, I really think it just depends on the industry that you sit in. I know at LinkedIn, it was acceptable to have blue hair, green hair, jeans, shorts. Like you could really just show up and be who you wanted to be. Um, so I really think that's the beauty of tech. And also at Nike, like even though I'm not on campus, I always hear the stories of people wear whatever they want and it's acceptable. So I really just think you have to know what industry you're sitting in and what you're working with. Thank you for that transparency, especially um, with everyone sharing like their different industries and what that looks like. I can say for myself, I'm into um, entertainment and, and, um, and media. And what is really interesting about that industry in particular is that, you know, we kind of have departments that is kind of dedicated to like what other companies don't have. So, you know, bringing your culture to work will help when you're trying to create a creative campaign and being able to be yourself authentically can help, you know, the company that you're working at do like amazing things and I'm really appreciative of the role um, that I'm in currently right now interning with BT. And just for those who are on the call, um, I would say that that industry in particular, just being in the media and entertainment industry, like when you think about it, we kind of consume a lot of media and we consume entertainment. It's at our fingertips, on our phone, through our television. So um, it's a great industry to look at if you're looking into really shifting and changing culture and then also bringing yourself to work because like people will pay you for your opinions and your ideas. So um, that's something to definitely think about. And that actually makes me want to um, go to Aaron. So Aaron, you um, last summer were living your life and you were at Apple Music. <laughs> How was that? Like, I know that you did a project where you're working with Meg Thee Stallion and being able to intersect your kind of two loves of like tech and um and music can you kind of touch more about that role and what that looked like for you um in that space yeah for sure so i was living my best life um last summer i loved la i'm trying to get back out there as fast as possible um and kind of to touch on the code switching point like it was the music industry so like i don't know if everyone knows this but like you can be extremely casual like you know what i'm saying you're with artists you're you're with you know a lot of black executives and stuff who are wearing casual clothes like cooler clothes than me honestly like my boss dressed better than me so I was you know what I'm saying? so it was real comfortable for me but in the same in the same way like um I did have to like um I, I don't know how to, I, I didn't really change myself but I was just open to a lot of different conversations and uh different like type of points and stuff that I, I was just trying to learn um to make myself more well-rounded and genuinely connect with people on touch points that they were familiar with rather than myself, if that makes sense. Um, but in terms of like my digital and experiential marketing um, background that helped me at Apple, like I felt like Apple was the perfect mix of culture and, and business um, and like the tech music space was awesome. Um, Apple let me really like pitch ideas to the team. They let me kind of reorganize like the database and stuff like that to make the delivery process of some videos a lot more um, smooth. And um, I feel like the reason I got the internship was because the team could see like my genuine passion for like the work that I was doing. 
Um, and that just came from like a genuine conversation that me and my, like my boss had from um, my interview. So just explaining my previous work from Sony and um, um, this other experiential marketing internship I had, they kind of like took to that and, um, and then hired me and it was a great fit. So I guess the point of that is to say like, as much as you're interviewing, you know, they're interviewing you, you're interviewing them as well. So like, make sure you do bring your full self and, and tell them what you genuinely are interested in. Um, don't try to just fit the mold that they want you to because they might even direct you to a, a position, you know, you didn't know or a team that might fit better for you if you just express what you see um, yourself wanting to do. So, yeah. Thank you for that, Aaron. It really seemed like you had a lot of great insights from your experience at Apple and you really claimed your space um, while you were there. And Sydney, I want to direct this question to you because um, that is like your mantra. Um, for those, I know that Sydney did introduce herself, but very modestly, um, Sydney was really the brains behind this whole panel. And what was really great was um, Sydney, when approaching myself and Zuri with um, putting together this panel, she really was like, I really want to have a conversation on really claiming your space. Like, how can young professionals do that? Um, as we are interning and, you know, still making change. And we're going to get into that as well, because you can definitely make changes in an intern um, and, uh, you know, moving throughout corporate spaces. So I know that you have a full-time offer that's coming up um, and we're really proud of you. But what does claiming your space mean to you right now, Sydney, you know, in your life as a recent graduate and you're about to get your MBA, Black woman, um, striving, graduated from HBCU. So what, what does that look like to you? Yeah, for sure. Um, and thank you for honking my horn a little bit. Um, you know, claiming your space can mean a lot of things, but for myself, it really just means showing up, being genuine, and being confident. And like I said previously, it, it definitely took time. Um, but as I have these different coffee chats, whether it be virtually or um, when I was at LinkedIn having it face to face, um, one thing that people always brought back to me or said to me was like, you know, you're very genuine, you're very passionate about um, the things that you say and just being meaningful. And so like Aaron mentioned and Michaela mentioned as well, like just showing up and um, knowing like what you want out of the internship and what you really want to get out of these different conversations. Because, I mean, it's easy to say like, hey, I want to throw some time on your calendar, but like, what do you really want to get out of it? How can that person help you? And how can you be a benefit to the next? Um, so that's really what claiming your space is and just being positive. And, man and that's something that I always say on my Instagram for those that follow me, but really manifesting that positivity for yourself because where you're at right now is not permanent. And so if you want to move, if you want to make that next step, you really have to step out on faith. Um, and I feel like that's really what I've been doing since we've been in this pandemic, getting my MBA, like, <laughs> that was not supposed to happen. Um, but because my full-time job with LinkedIn was pushed back to July 2021, um, the opportunity was there. And so I just went for it. I have another year of track to go. Um, and I'm just going to try to make the most out of the situation. Yes, echoing what someone wrote in the comments, congratulations, um, because all of your accomplishments are um, really inspiring, especially for those like, you know, no matter what stage that you're in. And I actually want to kind of go back to the original point. Thank you, Sydney, for your point on claiming your space, by the way, um, about the space you can really make entry level. I think that's a big misconception in whatever industry that you have that us as entry level professionals really do have um, the say. Because when you really think about it, a lot of companies have focus groups. Um, they're using interns for our ideas. Um, so companies obviously see the value in entry-level talent. And especially um, investing in diverse entry-level talent is so needed, especially at these times. I know that a lot of companies have been making a lot of moves and strides and efforts to bring on more diverse talents to their company. Um, but I want to shed the spotlight on one of our panelists, Zuri. Um, Zuri, I want to know if you can kind of speak more about um, really claiming your space and also um, making a change as an intern. So as you guys know, Zuri is working remotely with Google this summer, but he actually did something that was really cool for the culture um, and it really impacted all of us. So Zuri, I'll let you speak more about that. Yeah, so I appreciate that, De'Andra, uh, of how you frame that. 
It's too small on horn. Okay, so basically, basically what happened in a nutshell was I was able to raise the idea of getting Juneteenth added to Google Calendar permanently as a U.S. holiday, and that's reoccurring every every year. And that idea was executed. So that to provide context there of how I went about that process, it, it really goes into line with what everyone has been talking about. Bring yourself to work and providing, if that space isn't there, provide a space or, or make the space rather, excuse me. So what I did as an intern, being on my team, I think first you have to look at what your reach is and what the scope of your role is. So I was blessed enough to be on a team that was very diverse, to be transparent. Like, there's no white people on my core team at all. And granted, it's only seven of us, but still, that I think that I think that paints the picture of how I was able and felt comfortable to pitch that idea. So yeah, it starts with knowing your reach and your team's reach. One of the they and I work on Brand Studio, which is overall uh, overarching brand and reputation of Google. And so being being that we have that reach, they looked at our team to see how we could respond, or not necessarily respond, but what we we're gonna do for Juneteenth. And they asked me alongside some people in my team to, to do a brainstorm for Joan Teams and was pulled into that meeting. In that meeting, it's funny because how I talked about none of my core team is, is white. In that brainstorm, majority of the people were white. So it's like, how, how are we going to do something for, that's for our people, talking about Juneteenth, when we don't have much of our people there. So I, I felt that I needed to, to say something, needed to share my ideas. And then on the ideation tip, make sure the ideas that you're sharing are, are credible. Have data to back it up, have examples. So I was able to, it's funny because I remember it like it was yesterday and I'll wrap it up. But I was on my work computer in front of me and on, on my left, I have my personal computer and it's a map. So I looked up on, on Apple's calendar to see if they had Juneteenth as a, as a, a holiday and they did. So I was able to use that as foundation and as leverage to credit, to credit my idea so that it can be pushed through. So yeah, in a nutshell, it was wrapped up, it was executed and that's something that's gonna be to the end of time. So appreciate the question. No problem. Um, appreciate your, con uh, your contributions. A lot of us this year, um, I think with everything going on, um, especially with the racial injustices that's been going on and how uh, a lot of people within our community, you know, like the, the recent um, murders of like George, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, uh, Juneteenth was truly a celebration for us all. And we've been dealing with two pandemics as, as um as black people, um, not only the pandemic that's been killing us with the virus, but then also just the pandemic of being black in America. And uh, the fact that you really took that stride and to really be bold and to help us get Juneteenth on the calendar, which is something that we are fighting for all states to recognize as a national holiday. Um, we appreciate you for your efforts. And that just goes to show, I just want everyone in this audience to know that like, you know, it really uh, doesn't matter what level that you're at, uh, and what type of impact that you're able to make to a company. So, you know, everyone's valuable at every level. And thank you, Zuri, for that example. Um, I want to kind of go more into a question. Um, I know we spoke about code switching and we talked about corporate settings and things of that nature and really um, talking about like personal branding and things of that nature. Uh, off topic when it comes to just like professional and development and things. What is everyone's thoughts on um, efforts that um, companies are using to be able to recruit diverse talents? So I know it may be a bit biased for some who do attend HBCU universities, um, but for those who do not, uh, can you guys kind of touch more on that question on just like uh, how you've been recruited for specific positions? Has it been LinkedIn? Has it been more in face? Are they like at conferences and things of that nature? How are you really um, tapping into getting positions and what does that look like for you? I guess I'll go first. Um, so, hey, my, my name is Michael Ukuagwe. I don't go to an HBCU, I go to Georgia State University, which is, I, they're not a PWI, but yes, I go to Georgia State University and how I've been tapping into universities, how I've been tapping into companies, interviews have been through many ways. 
summits. A lot of, they, they used to do like a lot of like summits where they would fly you out, bring you into these summits. It's a two day, I want to say sophomore, junior year were the two biggest years because that's when they're prime time looking to develop. They're trying to develop us at that time. So I went to a lot of summits, but now I would say it's through LinkedIn. And how do I feel about all of this, the new, I would say, new efforts for diversity and inclusion? Well, diverse, diversity, I would say take advantage of it, but be very cautious just because you really want to know the company you're working for if they truly just do care about diversity or they're just trying to bring their numbers up. So I would say take advantage of it, but also do your research. Um, I would say the number one company I, I'm so happy to see that Sydney is at LinkedIn because they're a company I saw that they're really, really pushing for diversity, which I really do love. And there are certain tech companies such as Google as well and Amazon, where they're actually trying, they're actually trying to be more diverse. So I think it's a good thing, but just make sure you know, like you can actually see if the company really wants to, or they're just looking to up their numbers. Thank you for that advice, Michael. I don't know if Michaela wanted to touch into that point because I know you do attend Clark Atlanta. Um, yeah, so off of what Michael said, you made up a very great point and I'm just going to be pretty blunt. I'm just not sure what's authentic anymore um, on companies wanting to hire more diverse talent just because of, of these times that we're in. I, I'm not sure if it's done because of a, a perspective that's trying to be achieved or some sort of um, image that wants to be maintained. So to me, I really can't make the distinction between they're really looking for diverse talent versus we say Black Lives Matter and we really want to demonstrate it. Um, to me, I think it's important that companies really do reflect, you know, the communities that they serve. So, I mean, if you're a company that, you know, clients or consumers are uh, Black people or other people of color, then the people inside also should be Black people or people of color. Um, but I do recognize that there are a lot more Black people who are being introduced to C-suites and executive positions um, due to the things that are going on now. And although I'm not sure what's authentic, I appreciate it because at the end of the day, it is leverage for another opportunity. And it is just, it's another face. It's another part of representation for us. So although I'm not sure what's authentic, I do appreciate, um, you know, some of the changes, some of the rapid changes that are, are being made. I appreciate that, Michaela. And I think to your point is definitely um, a concern that a lot of students may have, especially now with recruitment now really heavily uh, relying on LinkedIn, uh, especially with things going virtual you really have to be, uh, you know, have discernment and be cautious of when those type of things are happening. And I could think even for myself, I don't attend an HBCU. I don't attend a predominantly white universe, um, university. I, I attend a city university. And what's interesting about that, it's really just like a school of melting pot. And, you know, we kind of commute home and it's students who are usually balancing full-time work jobs and real life things. And one thing that I found was a struggle for myself when it came to finding opportunities was that schools weren't really looking for us. Usually when it came to diverse talents, um, typically HBCU students would kind of be the first ones out of that melting pot to kind of be chosen or even looked at and considered. And then when you kind of uh, look at like top universities within a school, especially PWIs who may have a black community, like the last thing things are people are looking at is like those small city universities or public universities. Um, so if there are any students like that on that call on the call right now, just want to let you know that, you know, recruiters are still looking for us because diverse talent doesn't matter what school you attend it is just diverse in general and um diversity it does not only um exclude it to just race but it's also the diversity of thought um diversity of who who you are and how you represent yourself to work and um showing up really in your full self so i definitely want to to give that um as an encouragement piece for for those students who are looking um for those type of opportunities but kind of moving in as we're kind of wrapping up and I see that we have some questions in the chat. So I please encourage everyone to um, put their questions in the chat. 
And also, Sydney, if you can prepare with the names that we have in the chat so far to enter everyone's name in for the raffle that we have, um, so we can get started with that as we are wrapping up as well. Um, so one question we actually have for Sydney, it says, did you hear the recent news about the Black at Nike page on Instagram? Have you seen or heard any discrimination at the company and what has Nike done to improve their diversity outlook in terms of increasing representation? So before we get into that question, just want to put a disclaimer for everyone um, attending this panel that though we are interns for these companies, we're not speaking on behalf of any of these companies. Um, the views expressed are our own. So I'm um, just putting that disclaimer out there before that question is answered. And um, Sydney, I'll let you take that away. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Peyton, for asking the question. So I haven't seen that page. Um, I don't know anything about it, but in terms of like hearing about discrimination, um, again, like I'm only an intern, this has been virtual, so I haven't, you know, been able to see like how people are treating others outside of what I see on Zoom. And I know for myself, everyone has been very welcoming. Um, just initially, like the first week, I put out a video on my YouTube channel and I was receiving so much love. Um, and even in my one-on-ones, like I was just having a conversation with um a footwear designer from australia and he was like you know i didn't know it would be like this coming to america talking about black lives matter and he was having that conversation with me i was like whoa like this conversation just took a left but i'm happy that we can have <laughs> i'm happy we can have those conversations and he felt comfortable with um you know expressing that and then as well after juneteenth nike put on a week-long um like daily event where we were talking about Black history, we were talking about being Black at Nike, um, and we had different people coming in to speak on these different topics, and there were over like 2,000, 3,000 people joining the call, and so like people, people want to be educated. I feel like they just haven't been seeking the information until it's been presented to them, um, but being at Nike so far, and I was just talking about this to a, um, a VP, I think she's VP of Go to Sales, I was saying like, it would be great for consumers to see the work that's being done internally because I see it now, but from outside looking in, it just looks like it's done to make the money for the profit. Um, and I think Nike is really trying to change that narrative. Um, thank you for that that insight and thank you Peyton for that question. I hope that is what the the answer that you were looking for but sometimes there's so many things that are going on on social media it's kind of hard to keep up. I know we can all relate to that. Um, and in terms of social media, I actually want to pose this question to all of our panelists. So as we are young professionals and you know we're grinding out and we're doing our thing, um, it's kind of interesting now with social media kind of really being at the forefront of our lives. It is also part of our brand as well. Um, you know, even though we use that as a more of a personal thing to connect with people like Instagram versus LinkedIn, I'm curious to just kind of know how people are maintaining their professionalism on those platforms. Like, what does that kind of look like for everyone? Because I know Instagram's kind of like, Instagram could kind of be a midway point between being professional and also turning up Twitter. You can just be yourself. <laughs> I think everyone kind of uses Twitter for that. And then LinkedIn's kind of like you're suited and booted. So I'm curious to know what everyone thinks about that and kind of maintaining professionalism across the board with those platforms. I can start with this one because <clears throat> a lot of people, well, at least in my friend group, call Instagram like um, a music industry LinkedIn almost just because like you know, you want to seem lit and like, you know, people and like kind of mixing and stuff like that. But you also, you know, don't want to be smoking, drinking, you know, acting crazy on there and super unprofessional. So I think it's really just about, um, well, one, understanding that Instagram is like what you put out there is like obviously how you're portraying yourself. And you just want to do that as genuinely and authentically as possible. So just like, you know, giving people updates on like, what you're actually doing um whether that's like like i feel like you don't want to be too self-promotional and make it all business um because then it's not really like as fun you know the app isn't as fun for you but um um you do want to have some of that on there because employers you know do look at your you know page and make judgments off you everyone looks at your instagram um and they make judgments off you so I think you want to have that balance of like having fun and showing what you genuinely do, but then also like 
updating people on, you know, what uh, professionally and um, what other things you're doing as well. Okay. Anyone else would like to take a stab at the question? Yeah, I can, I can touch on that. I think one thing, one point to note is that recruiters, the first thing that they're going to, that, and this is dependent on, on your industry, but it holds true for the majority of industries. They're going to see your social media. They're not going to see LinkedIn. Well, LinkedIn is social media, but they're, they're going to look you up on, on Twitter, on Instagram. So one, if you are participating in whatever you want to participate in there and posting it, make sure you don't have a username that is your name because <laughs> that, that's an easy way to, for them to see that. But I think, and as, as you alluded to, is social media is, is really your brain. So what do you want, how do you want to be perceived and who are you, who are you as a person is going to come up on, on social media. So with that being said, if you do want to smoke, drink or whatever and post, have a close friends, have a Fista, all of that, all that other stuff, but maintain an image that you want to be perceived in these companies. And that's, that's one thing that I will, I will say that has got me to where I am. Like I literally I think it was about two weeks ago on, on my, on all social media, it's, it's at Zuri guy for my full name. So it's easy to find. And one thing that two weeks ago, my manager said was like, bro, you're, your Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, it's all consistent. And it's all the, the same type of posts, family posts. And that's honestly, that's just me. And if I needed to, to post something that I wouldn't want them to see, I would make a close close friends or friends or whatever. But yeah, so just keep that in mind as you post, as you comment, as people are commenting on you, on your posts. So yeah. So I wanted to touch on that as well because I did actually have a conversation about this with my recruiter and um, she gave me some tips I actually wasn't really expecting. Uh, she did mention to me that um, there's nothing wrong with having your social media private. Um, if you don't want your social media to look to be looked at, that's perfectly fine. Um, there's recruiters out there that don't look at them, but you should always be prepared for the possibility that they may. Um, she also recommended that you do be authentic because nobody's Instagram or social media is all about business and there are just a goody two shoes all the time. That's just not realistic. So you can be authentic, but you know, you can be appropriately authentic. Um, also, like Zuri did mention, I think you should put out there what you would want people to know about you, what you would want to be known for, or the perspective you would want people to know about you. So if you want people to say, yeah, he's, he's, good, he's great with marketing, then maybe you can put out some of the content that you work on. Um, you know, you can change things within your social media. It doesn't always have to be casual, but it doesn't always have to be geared towards your uh, professional career. So I think having that balance also works. Um, um, and like Zuri also did say, um, maybe not using your real name, having a close friend, um, close friends really does um, help as well. Okay, I just wanted to know if anyone else wanted to touch on that before I moved on. Everyone's like, nope, I'm staying out that territory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can even say for myself, social media is kind of tricky. Um, and I think that sometimes even with social media, while we try to stay as authentic as we possibly can, sometimes we can fall into a little bit of a trap of imposter syndrome. We all kind of get there when you're maybe trying to impress people sometimes or maybe only um, compare comparing yourself to other people, we'll kind of fall guilty of it. But I think the tips that Zuri and Michaela both touched on is great. Definitely utilize your close friends list. Um, <laughs> definitely don't want employers to see things. But I think it's really important um, what Zuri said about keeping a consistent brand. Because um, when you are kind of looking at different media platforms and you know you kind of have like many different brands and how you present yourself it's kind of like to people could be confusing on the outside like okay so who is he today or who is she today um so definitely keeping that in mind so i definitely want to wrap up um i see we have two more questions that i want to answer and we're going to answer them live so we have a question here it says that, um, have any of you 
dealt with imposter syndrome? I can't see the rest of the question because I think it went away, but, oh no. Have any of you dealt with imposter syndrome and what are some ways you have combated it? So it kind of goes into the point that I said, if anyone wants to touch on that, dealing with imposter syndrome, um, you know, how have you guys kind of dealt with that? Yeah, I can, I can speak to that. Um, I feel like you kind of want to have a little bit of that, you know, like you don't want to, well, you'll never be in a position in your internship where you know the most ever. So like, um, just really just being confident in, in the space that you're in and, and like the, the place that you're at and the level of knowledge that you're at. And like, as like everyone knows that you are learning and you're growing and that's the point of you being there. And um, I feel like as long as you have an attitude to like continue to learn, continue to ask questions and just not be afraid to, um, you know, just accept where you are, then um, they should be supportive of that. And, and you'll make a lot more progress than you think um, faster than you think uh, if you just kind of accept that. I um, wanted to hop into that too. I'm going to be blunt and say, yes, I deal with imposter syndrome all the time. Um, I go to a state school. I go to Georgia State University and they're not really, the thing with here in Atlanta is you have Clark, Morehouse, Spelman, Tech, Emory, and then you could throw in UGA, but they're kind of off. But you have all those big schools in one big area and then you have Georgia State. So when I go to all of these events and then I just talk to some of these kids, they're they're bright, they're smart, they're talented. And I'm just, oh, I go to Georgia State. So it it was it took me a while to actually like like just I would say realize that I know a lot more than I do. Before I used to tell people I'm not smart. No, I'm just getting really lucky. And I'm just like, no, these these kids are talented. These are the most talented kids. I'm not like one so all I can say is you really have to give yourself more credit because I used to deal with imposter syndrome all the time when I was going to these events. I'm like, I'm nowhere qualified like these other kids. But no, you are because they choose you for a reason. They don't just choose or select anybody. They they choose people they feel like can make a difference. So all I can say to that is just make sure you know you you have you have value. So, yeah. Thank you for that. Does anyone else want to touch on that? I see we got some some um, some support in the comments. Michael, for you, the Nigerian flag in the background. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. Is anyone else uh, want to comment on imposter syndrome? I can kind of touch on that a bit. I think for myself, the like kind of to the point that I kind of spoke on before about not attending a really big university and sometimes going up against kids who are from these really big schools and have these really big networks. I really um, felt like I didn't necessarily fit in. Um, but I think what fits the most to me, um, my girl Nicki Minaj put it um, best, no, I'm not lucky, I'm blessed, yes. And that has definitely <laughs> been kind of that pep song I kind of sing in my head before going to you know an interview or meeting new people. And you know, and, and with everything that kind of goes on, I know that every opportunity that comes my way is, is meant for me. And I just kind of take everything that comes. Um, I want to get into the next question. Okay, it seems like we have two more questions and we're gonna wrap up. And then we're going to announce our actual giveaway winners. So I'm really excited for that. And um, you guys don't actually have to do anything. We already inserted inserted your names um so we'll announce those so one question is do you guys have any advice for an upcoming hbcu freshman to market themselves like how to really sell yourselves when looking for internships i think that's a really great question especially because the fall may be remote but i think freshmen are going on campus can you guys correct me what's going on with howard um that's a head scratcher i don't really know but to answer the question like Figuring out who you are before you start interviewing is really what's going to make the difference. I remember saying, oh, I want to interview for this company and NBC and Johnson & Johnson. But when I got into the interview space, I didn't know what value I wanted to bring to the company. Um, and this was like my freshman and sophomore year. So really just having to redefine and understand who you are and staying in your lane. I know at Howard, like I said, everybody is going to succeed. Well, most of everybody is going to succeed. And hopefully your friends, sorry, stop. Most of the people in your friend group, like you want to make sure that they're elevating you. Um, so definitely take a look around and see who can help you get there. 
but just staying in your lane and figuring out what makes you different and unique will definitely help. Okay, thank you for that, Sydney. Um, and we're gonna go into the last question. So I'm going to pose this question to everyone. If you were placed in a position where you felt that your core values at work, your core values are being compromised in a workplace as an intern, how would you address the situation? That is a really good question. I'm just gonna repeat it again, because it was really good. If you were placed in a position where you felt that your core values are being compromised in the workplace as an intern, how would you address the situation? So whoever wants to take a stab at that question, yeah. please go ahead. I would say first things first, write that down, write how you don't like how you feel, because it's going to be, I would like to say at the end of your internship, you're going to have a lot of mixed emotions and you want to make sure you can really look back and tell yourself, there's a time where I did not like that. I almost compromised my core values because you don't want to see that offer of, let's say they offer you a hundred K starting out and you're just like, Oh my God, that's great. But you're going to forget the time where you felt like you had to lose your core values. So the first thing I would say is to write it down and make sure you, you remember how you feel. And second to that is, I would say, talk to your, talk to your manager. I'm really big on if you're not feeling comfortable, you are interviewing just because you're interning, they're interviewing you and you're, you're interviewing them. So you feel like something like that happens. I'm always like, talk to your manager. And if your manager doesn't want to listen, talk to the person above your manager. And then if they're not listening, then that's when you speak to university recruiting and tell them how, like what you don't feel. And that's I've, at Amazon. I mean, I would say that that's what how it happened. If I would feel comfortable enough at a company where if I knew that's going, I can go talk to the university program. So yeah, that's how I would approach that. Um, I wanted to take a stab at the question too. Um, I think I would say I would probably just reevaluate the company as a whole. I would probably go back and look at their values and, you know, almost kind of see if that's something that I believe in because I feel like if, if you interview for a company and you align with their values, but then their, their practices and their strategies, 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 strategies aren't aligned understanding there. Um, but then also there are companies that do present one set of values, but practice another. Um, you know what I mean? I, I mean, there's been a lot of different cases where that has been demonstrated. Um, so I think at that point, you kind of just have to reevaluate and, and kind of ask yourself, which is more important, my personal brand or my professional brand? And you have to see where can I, where can those two meet each other? Where can they be successful together? I think Michaela hit, hit a great point of looking at it from twofold, personal and professional. So I think, and this probably holds true for, for everyone. I was just putting in a, in a bond actually before this call because I was reflecting on Google's efforts to racial equity and, and everything going on. So I think something that holds true here with everyone is that Black Lives Matter. And Google hasn't explicitly stated that. So that was something I was like, do I bring this up? Do I, do I talk about it? Do I ask a question? And thankfully, if you heard, I'm on a team where I'm able to express my concern and bring my full self to work and explain my values and ask questions that relate to them. So I was able to ask that question and got a lot of insight on why and why not that I can't really discuss right now. But yeah, so. I think, as, as I said, Michaela hit the point of how to balance your personal and your professional brand. So them not explicitly stating Black Lives Matter is not going to, I'm not going to not come back full time if I'm Lord willing get the offer because that's not something that necessarily like has to be stated. They've done that through different efforts from a monetary standpoint. Also from my own experience, allowing Juneteenth to be added to the calendar. So I think you just in a in a whole in a nutshell wrapping it up, you have to look at it and see which is your personal, your professional, and blend the two to see exactly what company is best for you and how you can operate within their norms and with the processes that they go through as a business. Thank you for sharing that, Zuri. I think all of those things that you and 
and Michael really touched on um, were really great things to really think about when those situations do kind of get a little tricky at your job, especially when you're considering full-time employment. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all of the panelists that contributed today. You all did such an amazing job at really um, creating this dialogue and I really hope that this is not the last conversation that we are going to have but in the spirit of giving um, we want to announce our giveaway winners I hope they're still in the call um, and before we go into the names just to let everyone know all the attendees um, the three winners will actually be receiving um, a two personal consultations actually from Zuri's company Build and Brand New which includes um, resume revision, helping them with their LinkedIn, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if you want to go more into the details of that, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Zuri. Um, but everything that, um, uh, you know, touches on your mm -hmm. professional development and branding. Yeah, so, yeah, one thing to note that, yeah, so I, I do lead the, the company, but Michaela is our COO and our resume revisor. So actually, to the giveaways, she will be spearheading the giveaway of a resume review and I'll be spearheading the giveaway as a LinkedIn review for whoever, two out of the three people that are cho chosen. Okay, that is amazing. And now is definitely the season to be doing that in the summer, especially as we're gearing up for the fall and for internships. And our last gift is actually sponsored by Sydney. She is going to be giving away a Nike gift card. So um, our winners for today's Torch of Wisdom Young Professionals panel is Alicia B, Jocelyn Vega, and Adiola Adiandi. I hope I'm pronouncing your names right. But for Alicia, Josin, um, Adiola, can you please comment your emails down below? We have the email list of all the attendees and we'll be sure to reach out to you um, so you can figure out how to get your your um your gifts so is every all three of them in the chat oh, okay sydney typed it awesome okay um so we're just waiting on alicia and adiola to see if um yeah alicia's still in here and in the other one was adiola okay so they're both in here just waiting for them to to respond and um adiola waiting on you uh but uh, as we are wrapping up uh, I want um, all the panelists just to briefly say their, how they can be reached. Um, so if anyone from this call wants to continue the conversation, they can, and um, then we'll wrap up. Yes, Adiel, you're actually the winner. Um, so you can just write down your email address and we'll reach out to you of our giveaway. So Sydney, you want to drop yeah. that? <laughs> for sure. Um, thank you everyone so much for joining this discussion today. Um, it started out with just me, Zuri, and Deandra, just an idea. And I'm so happy and thrilled that this really came to fruition. I know if you want to connect with me, I already dropped my LinkedIn, but you can reach out on Instagram um, at sizzle, S-Y-Z-Z-L-E. Or you can watch my YouTube videos. That's cool too. It's Sizzle Girls. Yeah, so you can contact me um, Instagram, uh, which is Michaela Noel. I'll probably just put that in the chat. Um, my email, I also did put in the chat, and I also did put my uh, LinkedIn in the chat as well. Yeah, so I dropped my social media, but again, it's at Z U R I. G O D F R E Y, my full name on all platforms. And if you want to connect on a more personal level, it's my full name at LinkedIn, and my email is my first and last name at iCloud.com. Um, yeah, I'll put my Instagram in there, but it's Aaron K. Johnson, the gov whole government name, uh, underscore on everything. So just reach out to me on there, uh, or LinkedIn, like my name, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I um, put my LinkedIn in there. Um, feel free to reach out to me. And if you really want to reach out to me, I will drop in my email, my personal one that I check. So, yeah. Okay. And I'm dropping in my oh, Instagram. Oh, Aaron, you want to plug something in real quick? Oh, no, I was just saying thank you at the end. But Oh, okay. Yes. Um, 
just want to plug myself in there too, if you don't mind. Um, yes, you guys can reach out to me as well on LinkedIn. I dropped my link below and I have my Instagram. But thank you to all of our amazing panelists. Um, we definitely don't um, want to stop the conversation. We'll definitely have more. So you'll be seeing us. And thank you for all of our attendees. We hope you have a great evening. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you all for attending. And thank you all for having us too. Mm. Thank you.